So what is happening, people? Today is December the 4th. The water temperature, surprisingly to me, is 53 degrees. I figured it would probably be a little bit lower, so it just came down about 10 degrees in this particular lake, and we're at McGee's Mill today than it did when I was here a couple of weeks ago. The uh, uh, hunting and fishing movement period is kind of low today, so we'll just see how the crappy react to that. So, hey guys, I just went over 2,500 subscribers about a week and a half ago. Hey guys, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, your views, your subscriptions keeps the channel going, keeps me coming out making these videos. I enjoy making these videos. I am not the greatest computer whiz in the world, editing videos. Uh, I do all of that myself. I'm not the greatest in the world, but I have learned over the last year and a half uh, a lot about doing that. Hunting and fishing comes very natural because I've did that for so many years. And uh, that part I got down pat, but uh, some of the video making I don't. My goal is 10,000 subscribers. Uh, when I started the channel, I felt like if I can get 10,000 subscribers, then I would have uh, made a successful YouTube channel. And hey guys, we're well on the way. I appreciate all the subscribers and all you guys that have subscribed. And as usual, don't forget to hit the notification bell. Uh, click the like button below and subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate that. But you can still catch fish during December. I'm aiming to continue all the way uh, through the month of December. Come out, uh, produce these videos, and uh, some, catch some fish. And uh, the, the one thing you have to remember as the water temperature drops is to just slow down your presentation. Uh, that is the main thing. Slow down your presentation. You may just hold that lure there. I have no minnows with me today, fishing all artificials. Uh, I'm going to continue to use uh, that, that gold spoon has, has been pretty good. And uh, got my ACC crappy stick, looking forward to trying it today. We used that in the Eno River the last, in the last video. Uh, there's that hair jig. That has uh, produced some good fish, so hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep using that hair jig and, uh, because it's been catching fish. Now, a uh, couple of days ago, I went to Walmart, and you see that is a Barbie Garland's Monkey Milk uh, jig, uh, probably their number one seller. But you see that little jig with the eye on it? I saw those at Walmart. I picked them up. That's a 16th ounce. I love to fish a jig with an eye. Uh, I, I just think it catches more fish. And real quick, that is an ACC. Uh, jig head. That's about a, a eighth or three sixteenths ounce. It's a little bit big, but that's got a really nice eye. So he, here's the deal. So does anybody out there comment below? Uh, does anybody out there know where you can get some big eyed jigs similar to this, maybe lighter, uh, thirty second, sixteenth, eighth um, on the market? I've looked around some. I've not really found them. A lot of people don't have them because of the COVID outbreak, but Anyway, comment below if you have a good resource of where to find them, and uh, I appreciate it because uh, I'll buy some. Love to fish those eyed jigs. So since the wind is blowing me pretty hard today, I'm going to turn around and find this brush pile. Now I'm going to take my time right here, and I'm going to get this buoy marker set pretty darn close. See, there's that stump right behind it. So whoever sunk this done a good job and put it right beside of a big stump. That is, I'm looking, I'm off of it just a little bit. Now this live scope will tell me, let me zoom that out, it's going to tell me how far away I am. get it clear, the more I point directly to it, the clearer that becomes. Alright, so you see the you see the zero in it. Alright, so you see the you see the zero in it. So I'm coming right up underneath it. I know it's directly ahead of me and now I'm just just past it. So now I'm gonna take my Buoy marker, and I'm gonna mark it right there. 
buoy mark, and I'm gonna mark it right there. And we should be able to see that that buoy marker going down. See it going down right there? That buoy marker going down. See it going down right there? Ain't that amazing? See the buoy marker going down. Looked like it went right down on this. Went down just behind it. See it going down just behind it. So we just behind the stump. Put one of my Sedona reels on here, and uh, man, that thing is uh, this crappy stick. Man, that thing is light. Now with the marker, I know that that brush pile is right, kind of in front of me, right there. And you see the wind, the, the ripple on the water is blowing pretty good. It kind of keeps you. Uh, you know, if you catch a fish and the wind's going to puff you off of it, you can just come right back to it. It gives you a good visual mark. Now, it looks like the fish are hanging at 20, 20 feet. That's where it looks like they're hanging. Oh, got bit. There's a lure falling. right there. Watch him come up and get it. Boom. A little bit of crap. No, it ain't what we're looking for right there. We're looking for a better one. It's a little one. I'm looking for a better one. I'll tell you what, let's try that jigging spoon. It's a little heavier. So one thing I want to talk to you about uh, this morning, uh, in a couple of weeks we're going to start doing some rabbit hunting videos, uh, incorporating those in there, and some fishing videos. Got a couple of good South Carolina rabbit hunting trips coming up. Looking forward to those. We'll always have a great time, and there's always some sort of shenanigans going on when we head down to South Carolina. And this year, I may carry my boat. There's about a 30-acre lake there. I've caught crappy and bass out of it before. And I am really contemplating dragging the boat down there and uh, doing some fishing while we're actually there. They say there's some really big crappies in that lake. Oh, I like that jigging spoon. Still little crappies. Little ones. We want some big ones. We keep doing this, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to move. Alright. Another little one. Ah. Right. Better, not much. Hmm. Looking for a little bit better fish here. Where? One. Feels like he might be a little. Ah, oh, still another little one. Still another little one. I say we go find us another spot, y'all. 
So in this uh, portion of the video, I'm going to do a comparison of the older Lawrence unit, which many, many people have, and the new Garmin unit. And I've had some comments on the channel that, uh, well, what if we don't have these new units? How can we find these fish? Well, uh, as you can see in the video, the Lawrence may not give you the, as much detail as the uh, Garmin unit does, but you can still see very subtle things like rocks and humps in the brush and you can see as we cross this creek channel and we come out of the creek channel and up on top of that flat you can see the fish on the Lowrance stack so you know they are staged either right on the wall of that drop off or either around some sort of brush on the Garmin unit you can actually see the brush and know why they there and uh, so I've had some comments uh, you know on the channel about you know some of the differences so this was a good opportunity for me to show you uh, kind of how it looks differently so on the Lawrence unit older unit you have to use a little bit of your imagination uh, because you don't get the definition of the bottom contour like you do on the Garmin unit so you use a little bit of imagination uh, of well that's a rock pile or that's not a rock pile and the more you use it uh, the more you'll be able to recognize uh, details uh, on the screen but it definitely marks fish I've used that Lawrence unit for a lot of years on the front of the boat and it uh, it definitely marks fish uh, when I'm you know power trolling out the front of the boat I'm marking fish I'm catching crappy so it it definitely works also in the Lawrence unit I moved the transducer into the bottom of the hull and so it reads through the hole so it gives me a top end speed that's the only reason I have it mounted in the dash so I get a true depth reading as I'm uh, running across the lake whereas I don't get the true reading on the Garmin unit if I'm running top end so I hope that explains that I want to come one I'm a little with the little ones today. We need a big one. We were coming along this uh, creek channel here, and there's a tree limb laying out in the water, top of a tree down here, and it's got crappy stacked up on it right here. I'm gonna throw my buoy out on it because it's not big. It's a little difficult to get right on top of. So I'm gonna get. So this bank literally is just like this. And that limb is laying out in here like this and it's crap is related to that tree. There's one right there, boom. Oh, uh, see. Still little little crappies. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> Little ones, baby ones, even. Where's all the big ones at? Let's try our jigging spoon. You can see all the fish just kind of swarmed right down in there. There's a, there's a tree right there. You can see it sticking out. So it looks like my uh, my marker is dead on the money. So. We should be in the we should be in the fish. Boom! And it got bit immediately. This is a little better crappy, I think. Still a little. No. Wow. We should be in the, we should be in the fish. Boom! And it got bit immediately. This is a little better crappy, I think. Still a little. No. Wow. Wow. Little ones. 
We gotta figure out what's going on, y'all. That's a good picture of that that treetop there. Boom. And uh they're certainly eating. And I got him in the got him in the buoy. Y'all ever did that before? Got the fish in the buoy marker. Well, if you hadn't, this time. Wow. Still a little crappies. Hey guys, so we're gonna, we're getting ready to end this video. Uh, caught a bunch of fish today, but all on the small side. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I caught a lot of big fish today because I didn't. Uh, I'm gonna be truthful with you when I make these videos. Uh, so I caught a lot of fish. I fished a lot of brush piles. I fished some stumps on the side of the creek channels. Fish were really, really tight. <clears throat> the fish were really, really tight today. All the shad was in tight school balls. I didn't see a lot of bass moving around chasing shad like I usually do here. And uh, so that kind of tells me that fish were a little lethargic today. And most of the time when you get to a stump or a brush pile that's been holding some good sized crappy and all you're catching is those little small ones either the fish are not biting or either they've moved now i moved around this lake and i actually saw more shad activity in the upper end of the lake so they may be in a little bit of a transition pattern not sure and i fished some brush piles and some logs that are in about 20 feet of water that were holding fish two or three uh, about three weeks ago a lot of crappy holding in them and there's just no crappy there and with this live scope i can see if there is actually fish there so i don't have to guess whether the fish are just not biting or not there i can actually see them so anyway hey we're going to call it today and uh hey we had it's a great day on the water the lord give us a good day it's a little cool but uh, any day you can get on the water is a great day. Hey guys, you remember, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Click that like button below. And uh, we appreciate all the support we get for the channel. And you remember, it's a wild life. And I'll see you on the water.